Hi, right, so now let us do a continuation of where we left. So remember, we have already covered uh, part number two, where we spoke about the synthesis of the alkenes, how to form the alkenes. We saw that we talked about two reactions. Uh, quickly, recap, we talked about two reactions. We said the alkyl halide will give us an alkene, and therefore we said that the alcohol will also give us an alkene. And then here for alkyl halide, we spoke about the elimination, and we said that this elimination, uh, we use a base that will dissociate into its ions, and those ions, we're gonna have the nucleophiles. The nucleophiles, they will interact with our alkyl halide to form an um, alkene. And remember, we also spoke about a substitution here, and that substitution, remember what did we say? We said that the nucleophile will substitute with a halogen from this alkyl halide to form an alcohol. That alcohol will further undergo dehydration um, with strong acid to form an alkene. So here it is dehydration straightforward. Alcohol, with, and remember, you have to pay attention to the molecular structure of your alcohol, whether it is second classification class, class of your alcohol, whether it is primary, secondary, or tertiary, so that this alcohol will uh, react under the strong acid as a catalyst to form an alkene. That's also very important, the class of your alcohol. Now, in this video, we are now going to talk about the reactions of alkenes, okay? Now we're going to discuss the reactions of alkenes. Now we form the alkenes here. We take in those alkenes, we're gonna react them. We're gonna form different types of products when we take the alkenes under certain conditions. So now this is what is happening, okay? Under the reactions of alkenes, you're gonna have a lot of them. There are 10 of them, okay? These reactions, there are 10 of them and we need to know them. Now, the nicest thing about this organic chemistry is that the very same thing that we are going to learn, we are still going to apply it later on, okay? We're still gonna do a repetition. That's the nicest thing about it. And you doing repetition, it's more like you emphasizing uh, on, how, on, on how to understand these things. So do not mind just learn and be patient because we're still going to do a repetition so the um, all right so now let us do part number three the reactions of alkene there are 10 of them like for an example hydrohalogenation is the first reaction that we're going to talk about from the slide so the hydrohalogenation it is a reaction that we're going to use as a synthesis under halogens you see so we're still going to repeat this under halogens remember here we are under alkenes so the first reaction is hydrohalogenation uh you can see that we got it's these are the addition reactions we're going to add hx to alkenes and then we have hydration we're going to add water to alkenes we have halogenation we're going to add halogen molecule remember it's a diatomic element um, to alkenes, uh, hydrogenation is addition of hydrogen. Don't confuse hydrogenation, halogenation, and hydrohalogenation. You can see that these are different hydro, halogen, hydrogen, and halogen. Here it's high, um, um, halogenation, um, addition of halogen, hydrogenation, addition of hydrogen. You see, don't confuse that. And then we have the epoxides and oxidations. Now, these two types of reactions, they are most definitely different, but these two types of reactions, these are addition reactions of oxygen to the alkene. So we're going to add the oxygen molecule, uh, oxygen gas to our alkenes. But you have to understand that for epoxidation reaction, we're going to form the organic compounds that are called epoxies. So we're going to use peroxy acid and addition of oxygen to an alkene to form what you call an, epo uh, an epoxide, um, an epoxide, and so why this type of reaction is called uh, epoxidation. It is also regarded as oxidation, okay? And therefore we have strictly oxidation. These are oxidations, these are the reactions where we add oxygen once more again, but here we're going to form most definitely uh, different products, okay? So the reason here on, on, on epoxide is because we use what you call the per, uh, peroxy acid. And then here on other oxidations, we're not going to use peroxy acid. Rather, we just use the um, potassium permanganate. 
um, with alkene, because they are the alkenes, to form um, different types of organic compounds we will see. And then we have halohydrin formation. So halohydrin formation, it's formation whereby we, um, you will see whereby we reacted our alkenes with this specific um, combination of atoms. Um, and then here we have the diols formation, again from the alkenes. And then we have polymerization of alkene, the formation of plastics. Um, and then we have formation of cabine as well from the alkenes. So in this video, I think I'll just discuss one, two, three, four, and then I'll do a video on four, five, six, and so forth, okay? All right. So now let us start with hydro uh, halogenation, which is the first reaction of alkene. Remember, this is what is happening. When you talk about the hydro halogenation, we said we're going to add HX to alkene to form an alkyl halide. Now you can see that we are forming different products. We're no longer forming alkene. We're no longer synthesizing alkene, but rather we are taking an alkene under a reaction. So here we're going to form an alkyl halide. So under hydrohalogenation, I am going to look uh, over three types of reactions based on the molecular structure. So we have A, B, and C. These are same, um, again, homologous series. These are all alkenes, but um, the structure and the symmetry are not the same. So the first, the first one, the first uh, reaction, which is number A, we can see it's cyclic molecule. And then here, it is this molecule, um, and then here it is this molecule. The difference between molecule B and C, reaction A, B and C, here we have two, this carbon atom, which is bonded to this carbon atom by double bond. It is attached to two um, alkyl groups, and therefore this carbon atom, which is bonded to this carbon atom, this carbon atom, it is uh, attached to one alkyl group, and this carbon atom, it is also attached to one alkyl group. So that's the difference, but we'll discuss that because you're gonna um, talk about the regi uh, regio selectivity or the regio specific specificity. So now, um, reaction number A, we want to add HX. Remember, X is an indication of your halogen. So we want to add HX onto this reaction. It's just addition. So all the times on double bond, we are adding because you want to break the double bond to form a certain compound. And then if you have a look at all of these addition reactions, the um, solvent that we're going to use is ether so that um, our substances can dissolve and then the reaction can take place. So we're also going to use ether for these reactions. So ether is going to be used in this uh, type of addition reaction to form these products. Yeah? So now this is what is happening, guys. Remember, sometimes they're going to give you the reactants and they're also going to give you the um, whatever catalyst that is needed. And then this will be the part that will be missing. They would want you to write the product. So writing the product of this chemical reaction, it is very, it is very important. You take note of what we call the Markovnikov's rule, Vladimir Markovnikov, the Russian chemist. So now this is what is happening. We are adding HBr here, and then uh, we're gonna break the double bond, and then we're gonna have the free radicals over there. But these free radicals, we have to understand that Br and H, they do not just bond randomly. We have a regio selectivity by Markovnikov's rule. So Br will go to carbon atom. Remember, here we have carbon atom and here we have carbon atom. Br will always go to carbon atom that is bulky or to carbon atom that has high substitu uh, substituents. So this carbon atom, it has this substituent. This carbon atom doesn't have this bulky substituent. So that means Br was supposed to go to the carbon atom that has high substituent. And hydrogen will most definitely go to the side that has fewer number of substituents. So this product, it is like they do not swap these uh, atoms, bring Br and H there. It's very important. And then reaction number B was different about it is that here we have carbon atoms that are the, that are bonded by double bond between, and this carbon atom it is attached to this alkyl group. This carbon atom is attached to this alkyl group. So which carbon atoms it is more bulkier? It is this carbon one. There's more concentration of alkyl uh, of um 
I'll kill, uh, I'll, uh, I'll kill substituents. So that means this carbon atom will receive our halogen, which is Cl, because it is more bulkier. So our Cl will most definitely come to this carbon atom, which is this one. And therefore, the hydrogen will be here. Again, we are also talking about the Markovnikov, so which is regio selectivity. And therefore, reaction number B, here we have the same degree of substitution. This carbon atom, it is substituted to this alkyl group. This carbon atom, it is also <laughs> attached to this um, alkyl group. So here, we do not have the side which is more bulkier than the other in terms of number of substituents. So in this case, we're going to form two products. We say this is homogeneous reaction, um, he uh, heterogeneous reaction, whereby we're going to form two products. So in this case, it's possible to form the two products um, because really, I would not know whether PR will come there or there. So PR can come either way. So we're gonna form two product as we see over here. So this is very important, okay? It's very important because you can only be given the reactants and they would require you to draw the products. You drawing the products, you pay attention to what is reacting. And therefore this will be the hydrohalogenation reaction. Now the second one, under the um, this thing, um, alkene, we have hydration. Hydration, what is happening during hydration? We add water to alkene again. So remember, our aim is to break the double bond. So we have to add water into this uh, double bond. In which way are we going to add water? In a form of ions. So we have H plus ion, we have OH minus ion. So this OH minus ion will come to one of the carbon atoms and then this H plus ion will come to one of the one, uh, one of the carbon atoms. And then this is what I want to highlight is we are forming the alcohol using the alkene by adding water. Another thing that I want to highlight is that hydration mechanisms for hydration. Then we're going to talk about the protonation because we're going to add proton. But the mechanism for hydration is the same as the mechanism of hydrohalogenation. Yeah? So hydration, just that I presented only this equation. I mean, like you can have alkene that looks like this. And then you're just adding water onto this. We're still going to obey Markovnikov. Whatever we did over here, it is still applicable even when we want to hydrate this molecule. But just that we have to pay attention to the catalyst that is being used during the reaction. Here we're going to use strong acid. We can use H3PO4, where we can use H2SO4. So these are strong acids that we use for this chemical reaction to take place um, as a catalyst. So if you want this reaction to take place to form an alcohol, make sure that you use a proper acid. So hydration and hydrohalogenation, they are the same. The problem is the other one we're forming uh, alcohol, the other one we are forming an alkyl halide and the catalyst are not the same. Make sure of that. This is how you start, right? Right, so Markovnikov also plays role in this type of chemical reactions. And then we have the halogenation. Halogenation is addition of halogen. Remember halogen, it is a diatomic element. It exists as diatomic element in nature. Pr2, I2, um, Cl2. So now if we want to add onto the alkenes, if we want to add this one, Height is very important and it has a lot. So we have two reactions, which is A and B, okay? So here we can see it's just a simple organic molecule. And then here it's um, a cyclic molecule. Let us start with this one. So addition of Cl, remember, addition is all about the breaking of the double bond. So if now we break this double bond, we're gonna, free, we're gonna form three R radicals. And then these Cl molecules, they are the same. So it does not matter. We're not even going to discuss Markovnikov here because it's Cl and Cl. It's not like H and Br or H and Cl, where right now we have to figure out where Cl will have supposed to go. You know, So that's not matter in this case. So we're gonna form this organic compound because we just added Cl there. Now, this organic compound, it is normally used uh, as a solvent, obvious, to um, dissolve the substances that will be reacting, okay? And also, it can also be used as a study material for the synthesis of polyvinyl chloride, which is PVC, right? Again, the very same thing, when I say it can be used as a solvent, 
it can be used for this reaction number again, okay, which is reaction number B. I mean, this is odd and this is weird. We are producing dihalide using an alkene. This dihalide that we produce, we're gonna take this dihalide as a solvent and then we dissolve Br2. Apparently, Br2 can dissolve in this product, which is dihalide. Um, and we take another alkene to form another dihalide, but that's how it just works. So that means in this case, we're gonna take our product over here and then we dissolve Br2 and we take that Br2, we react it with an alkene. Uh, by breaking the double bond again, it's addition reaction. But here, it's very important on how you draw your product. So stereochemistry is very important when it comes to this. So apparently here, okay, here, here what is happening is there is an unknown fact on the stereochemistry of this organic compound because normally these reactions, they do not form cis um. Um, 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 configuration, they form trans configuration all the times. The C's are not going to be formed. So this is, is because we can see that CL and CL are facing in the very same direction. So this is this molecule. So there is a known fact about the stereochemistry of this organic compound, but apparently we can also form it in this way. So the most important thing is when it comes to the cyclic, pay attention on how you draw your organic compound as a product. Okay, so this is a uh, trans, it has different uh, directions. Okay, we don't form cis. And this is how we generation. And then we have the hydrogenation, addition of hydrogen to alkene. And then to form an alkene apparently by breaking this double bond. Now, this reaction, which is halogenation, we only form trans. It will this oppose this here we form high percentage of cis. So when you take an alkene, you add hydrogen, you add your hydrogen, you want to form an alkene, you add your hydrogen by breaking this double bond over here. Uh, what you're gonna do is, um, you adding this hydrogen uh, atoms onto this molecule, you have to account for your stereochemistry. So here we're gonna form a cis, a high percentage of your, that means the remaining percentage will be trans, but normally we form this. So this is the most stable structure that gets to be formed during this type of chemical reaction. And then apparently this hydrogenation, it takes place of, over a metal surface, a metal surface of a palladium, we use the palladium, um, um, a platinum, dioxide or we can also use the palladium so as a catalyst so that the reaction can take place faster okay um that's very important and remember we for instance i like here where we form trends we're still gonna do this under haloalkanes when we do the synthesis of haloalkanes and therefore for now that's it